So today we've got a very important topic. It might seem a little bit, oh, why do I need to know this? But we're going to be talking about specifically for cats and dogs, the role of carbohydrate in their diet and what problems that can cause when we get it wrong. And then we're going to also move on to talk about how to transition your pets onto a healthy diet. First of all, Timo, let's just have a little recap for when we're talking about our dogs and cats, what are carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are building blocks like protein or fat for different structures. Uh, the most known is paper, cellulose, that is the building block of wood and, uh, and plants. Uh, this is a carbohydrate. Um, many don't know, but your DNA is carbohydrate. <laughs> so all this all the parts of your DNA are also carbohydrates. Then your um, joint fluids are carbohydrates or hyaluronic acid, which keeps your cells together and the water together is a carbohydrate. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So joints are, well here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there are, so there are a lot of carbohydrates um, in the body that do structural things. It's also, of course, a very good uh, energy source for different animals, including humans but not for all animals. So some animals are totally um, adapted to burn a lot of uh, carbohydrates, like a monkey or a horse, most of the herbivores, and some of them are um, not. And a cat, for instance, is a very good, uh, very good example of that. Let's start with dogs first then. So tell us about how dogs can or can't process carbohydrates in their diet. All right, so let's compare dogs and wolves first to understand it better. The wolves are very bad at um, digesting complex carbohydrates like starch, but they are okay with some amount of uh, basic carbohydrates like fruit sugar and glucose because uh, they eat uh, part of the season before winter. Some of the sugars from apples and other berries and other plants, they can digest that. And if it's not too much, they are okay with that. So yeah. the dogs evolved to digest some of the starch they are getting in their intestinal tract, but they are not evolved enough to start the digestion in the mouth like a real sugar eater, right? Yeah. So, so they have some genes helping them to produce some of the enzymes that is needed to break down uh, starches, but they are not good in breaking down very complex starches. And I, we will come to that. So starch is not just starch. There are so many different types. And even if in the same uh, plant, you can have a total different structure of starches, which dissolve or break down differently. So what about yeah. cats? Oh, cats are really poor in that. They can digest very little amounts of starch and that is uh, mostly in their liver. Um, and they are not not made to eat complex sugars at all and they are mostly 99 percent meat eaters anyway animal matter eaters and with, within this one percent they don't they cannot get much sugar anyway so yeah. their body is not uh, adapted to eat complex sugars or primarily basic sugars even because most cats would be evolved to eat small prey that not only would not have you know, they'd have tiny amounts of carbohydrate in their stomach, wouldn't they? Or their digestive tract, let's say, rather than the stomach. Um, but also they're not going to, yeah, they're, they're going to be small, agile, little, low-fat prey, etc. We've already established that cats are designed to eat very low carbs yep. and dogs some carbs, but not all carbs are equal. So yep. what is some of the main problems with some of the commercially made pet foods that people can buy? All right. So um, just to know, the commercial pet food is made in a way to use um, standard human grade food or the rest of them and turn them into something valuable to make money. So in America, this is mostly corn. So corn is everywhere. And it's a staple for many things. And it's used uh, excessively in many things. And one of these things is to extract the starch or use the corn as a whole and make uh, a baked starch structure, 
which can put all the protein and fat in and make a kibble out of it. Mm -hmm. So the kibble is formed starch with protein and fat in it and fat on it. So without the starch, no kibble. So the yeah. typical commercial dog food and cat food, uh, when it's dry, in dry form, the kibble form, has to have a certain amount of uh, starch to be able to produce it. And that's mostly about 20 to 20 percent. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. And the, the dog food uh, or pet food industry made sure with the regulations that they don't have to tell you how many carbs is in their food. Now, sometimes carbs can come from what we think are healthy. So I deal with a lot of clients on a day to day basis, horse clients, dog clients, um, cat clients, all animals. But today we're specifically talking about dogs and cats. And one of the things I see, Timo, is in cat food and dog food, even some of the higher quality brands and even, even some of the frozen raw brands have an awful lot of things like potato, rice, starchy vegetables, etc. in them. Yeah. So, okay. Um, again, some of the things that are uh, absorbable might be dangerous and some of the things that are not absorbable might bring some advantages. So it's not just um, if they can digest it or not. For instance, horses cannot digest hard, um, hard cellulose. You can see them from their feces. When you look at it, you see all the structures that are not digested. But because of those structures, the intestinal tract work. So some of the things, again, it's about adaptation. So you can give your cat a handful of sugar. It will digest it perfectly. Nothing can stop the sugar from being absorbed but it might kill it, right? Yeah. So it, just because it's absorbable doesn't mean it is something good. But um, some of the vegetables that come rich in carbohydrate, which it's almost impossible, nobody can get uh, overweight with vegetables. So they don't have enough absorbable um, amounts of sugar in them. Or Yeah, but mm. let's say we use uh, potatoes, some roots, uh, yams, or things that are really rich in, um, in carbohydrates, they are really detrimental for the dog over the long run. Yeah, and, and very, for, very for detrimental sure. for cats. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and there's another question about bacon. And yes, we will bacon. come to that too. But uh, there are two types of bacon. One is the smoked one, one is the non-smoked one. So if you have natural bacon, then it's okay. It's not too bad, but it's a bit fatty. So small amounts are okay. But cats are not fat eaters. Don't forget that. You can maybe you give the non-fatty part as much as possible and don't try to overheat it. Uh, we will talk about it. Uh, but if it's smoked, forget about it. It, is, it smells really good because of the free amino acids in it, but it's, uh, it's, it's poison for the cats. Now, one thing before you move on to the next bit, I just want to point out that we have got, we'll talk more about it later, but we've got really good, really cost-effective home preparing your own dog and cat food courses, which Andrea has put in the comments. But even if you're not going to make your own food, these courses are absolutely invaluable. And the reason Timo and I prioritise doing these first is we see so many health conditions that are linked from people thinking that they've got a good quality um you know food but it's not and it's because there's things in there that they didn't realize that were bad of them so one of the good things about the course is one it tells you how to very simply and easily prepare your own recipes and what you can and can't feed your animals but also it will give you the information for what to look at if you're buying a ready-made meal as well that's correct also the we explain all building blocks in detail so you can really if you read the package you understand what you're looking at